Hello, my friends. Welcome back to Sanctioneering. Wow. I don't know if it's just the spur of the moment or the psychology of something new, but I'm having a blast doing just PowerPoint because that means no editing. So it's making these videos go by much more enjoyable so far. So I'm going to try to hash out a bunch of problems for y'all. My goal is to get to do several uh, of the chapter 4 problems before fall 2019. So by the time you guys start your classes, by the time y'all start your classes, you can ask me questions and I can do some more follow-up videos. Um, does that sound like a plan? Hopefully I can do it by fall. So we're continuing with Richard M. Father, Chemical Process Analysis, 4th edition. Please don't sue me. Problem 4.2. <clears throat> I'm pretty sure this is legal because uh, I read that you can, you can like, uh, you can show things from texts and do lectures from texts as long as you don't straight up copy the entire textbook. Then I think you're good. Anyway, a liquid phase chemical reaction A to B takes place in a well, well stirred tank. The concentration of A in the feed is Ca naught moles per meter cubed, and that in the tank and outlet stream is Ca moles per meter cubed. Okay, so. Let's just kind of, let me just describe what it's saying, okay? So we have this tank, so this means that this is a stir, stir, and here's the, the fluid uh, level, and it's a uh, cylindrical tank. So this describes the volume of the tank, and so here we have our inflow, and so V dot is the volumetric flow rate. Again, I know I skipped chapter 3, but volumetric flow rate is nothing other than the volume per time. And CA naught is the concentration of this first stream coming in and so some stuff is going in there is a reaction okay so we're going to be talking about this guy the flow rate out is v dot meters cubed per second so again volume per time the concentration is ca moles per meter cube so this is the initial concentration ca naught and this is the final concentration ca and so notice that these, these subscripts are different but notice how these subscripts are the same. So this volumetric flow rate is equal to this volumetric flow rate. But the concentration going in is not equal to the concentration coming out. Okay, so in other words, we're going to have a, a concentration change. And so the way, the way we calculate that is partly due to this reaction term. So this reaction term, you know, let me, let me talk about my main gripes for this. Bro, this is straight up kinetics. I don't know why um, Dr. Felder... I, re I respect the guy, he has a lot of um, tips on education, but I, I, you know, it's hard to know why he's asking a kinetics question, which is really a sophomore, junior, or even a senior class um, in an intro to chemistry textbook, but I, I guess it makes sense because if, you, if you're exposed to it early on, um, it might help you later on. So I'm going to try to break it down to you, because um, we're going to see it again in kinetics, which I'll probably do some videos on that in the future. Um, but for, for now, just focus on the mass balance, and I'll, I'll try to walk you through all the all the kinetics stuff that's going on. Okay. But at the end of the day, kinetics is mass balance, so that really is the logic that justifies asking this problem. Okay. But do your best to to solve these questions. The first question is just like last time: is it continuous batch or semi batch, transient or steady state? So we we talked about that in the last um, in the last video. A couple little tidbits before continuing: notice that it's a well stirred tank, and neither concentration varies with time so this concentration is constant and this concentration is constant okay in another class senior year um process dynamics and control maybe uh maybe they're changing with time uh so that means non-steady state transient we talked about that oh did i just give it away i wanted you to think about it but uh in this case remember these are the definitions we talked about before so think about what it means in this case, we're going to assume that it's steady state, and this is definitely a continuous process. The flow is coming in and out, and it's said that neither concentration is changing in time. Okay? So part B. What would you expect the reacting concentration, Ca, final concentration, to equal if k equals zero? No reaction. What should it approach if k equals infinity? Infinitely rapid reaction. Okay, so again... You know, this is an intro chemistry class, but it, it's good that he's giving us a preview for the future classes. So that's pretty good. So pause it and think about this for just, just a sec. I know it might be a little challenging if this is your first time seeing kinetics. Okay. So at least he gave us this equation. 
This is, by the way, a first order chemical reaction. Okay. We might have even saw this in Gen Chem, actually. Because, right, the reactant A goes to product B. Okay. I just assigned B arbitrarily, it could be anything. But notice how there's this reaction rate constant, K, the volume, and the CA. And notice how it's moles per second. Okay, so this is a rate, concentration. We'll name it the moles per second. If you multiply it by volume, that will be your uh, concentration. Um, anyway, uh, so if K equals zero, there's no reaction, right? So what do you think that means? So if K equals zero, then A will never convert to B. So whatever CA naught is coming in, right? If the reaction is very slow, then K equals zero. Thus, A will never convert to B and CA will not be changing. CA naught will not be changing. Thus, the final concentration will be equal to the initial concentration. Okay. If K is very, very large, if the reaction is very, very fast, then K is infinite, and this is very fast, then this reaction will proceed very quickly. All this B will be forming, right? K A will convert completely to B. Thus, the final concentration will be zero. The final concentration of A will be zero because all of this A converted directly to B. It's like changing. It's like a constant. You know, it's a chemical reaction. And so, well, here's your answer. Positive. Think about it. A little tip is, if it makes sense, then uh, try to explain it to someone else. They say you don't really learn something until you can truly uh, explain it to someone else. That's when you truly have learned the fundamentals. Okay. Part C. So this one's the doozy. Write a, differential mass, uh, write a differential balance on A, starting with the terms in the general balance equation. Accumulation equals, when in doubt, accumulation equals in minus out, plus generation minus consumption. Uh, you discard it, and why you discard it? Use the balance to derive the following relation between the inlet and reactant concentrations. So I remember um, looking back at my book and I wrote a little note. I was like, what the heck is this? Do we need this? The answer is yes. You, must al you almost always need everything in the book at some point or another, so I might as well do it now. So I challenge you to write the equation and think about it, okay? So in minus out. We have in and we have out. What about generation and consumption? Have we talked about that yet? Hmm. Pause it. Continue. When in doubt, accumulation equals in minus out. Plus generation minus consumption. So what can we do? We can convert the generation consumption into plus or minus reaction, okay? We're going to talk about whether it's positive or negative in a second. So here's our system. Here's our reaction term. So what we can do is since we assume a steady state, we can say the left side is equal to zero. And we can plug in all these guys. So the M in, M out, the flow rate in, the flow rate out, and the reaction term, which is given by right here. We can plug it in right here. Zero is equal to the flow rate in minus the flow rate out plus or minus the reaction term. Okay. So what about this guy? Is this loss or is this gain? <laughs> There's no loss. So um, this is a little bit tricky for me. I was like, I don't get it. Is it is it positive because it's because it's being being converted? Is it negative? Because no, just write this down. If it's gain, it's positive. If it's loss, it's negative. That's not a happy face, by the way. It's loss is negative. Okay. So in this case. What do you think is going on? So this is converting. So A is converting into B. So if we're writing the balance on A, right? And A is being lost. It's being consumed. Right? So this is loss. So this is actually a valid mean. <laughs> I'm sorry. Is this a dead mean by the time you're watching? It's already a dead mean. What am I talking about? So this is why this is minus RA. Minus KVCA. KCAV. Um, so again... This is accumulation is zero, flow rate in minus the flow rate out, minus because it's consumed times the reaction rate constant. Don't worry about this too much for now. This will be more on kinetics, and then the concentration times the volume. Okay. 
Here's a little side note. I challenge you to pause the video and do the units on each of these terms. Here's a clue. They should all be in mass per second. Mass per time. Mass per time. Mass per time. What about these guys? Moles per volume. volume. And then you can solve for the units for K, huh? Hmm. Anyway, if we know that mass is density times volume, we want to write in terms of concentration. And to write concentration, we need volume. So they wrote volume in, with a little v dot, so we can replace these. So m dot in is equal to v dot c a in, and m dot out is equal to v dot c a out. This is the c a in, and this is the c a out. So replacing these right here, plug it in. This is our general mass balance complete. Yay! So if you understand this, you're more than solid in terms of your understanding. If not, that's okay, because practice makes perfect. Like I said, we're going to do a ton more problems, but now we have to solve for CA. Why? Because they told us to. <laughs> no, because um, in kinetics, we want concentration profiles. Again, we'll talk about it in the future. So meaning we want to solve for the concentration coming out of the reactor, which makes sense, right? Because we, we want to know if our reactor is working. Is the crap that we're putting in converting into the crap that we want? That's the whole purpose of kinetics. And uh, like one of my professors would say, we got to do some math gymnastics. Namely, we got to do some algebra. So solve for CA on your own. I think you can do this by yourself. Um, I'm just going to quickly walk you through it. So the goal is to solve for CA like this. So I'm going to start by factoring it out from here and here. Factoring it out. Moving it over. Solving for CA. You know, we can divide it over. I obtain this relation. And look, it's very close. If you divide by v dot, this will become, look, same exact equation. You see that? I challenge you to do the math yourself. You just divide by v dot. A lot of times professors like to skip a lot of algebra, and that's a little frustrating, but it's, it's actually very useful for you to see the math yourself. So all you have to do is divide the top by v dot, and this cancels out. Divide the bottom by v dot, this goes to 1 plus kv over v dot. Right. And so we can confirm our logic from part b. I'm surprised they didn't ask us to do this. So remember, at a low reaction rate, k is small. So if k is small, we can neglect this term. Because a constant plus another constant that's small is just another constant. So we have ca equals ca naught over 1 plus 0. This is ca over equals ca naught over 1. So CA equals CA naught, which is what we said before, right? That's what we confirmed before. So if the reaction rate is small, the final concentration is equal to the initial concentration because it never changed. And at high reaction rate, when K is very large and a constant divided by a very large number, namely infinity, is just going to be zero, which also makes sense, right? Because if the concentration is changing very fast, then the final concentration is going to be zero. And that could be a good thing or a bad thing because maybe you want to convert all your reactants into products. Maybe you want to save some of your reaction for um, recycle feed or uh, maybe you want two products. You know, chemical engineering is a very interesting large scale cooking game. And we're beginning to see that. Okay, there's a lot of different ways we're going to see in different processes. And uh, maybe you'll see it in the industry or maybe you'll get an internship. And if you are seeing these kinds of things, uh, or maybe in lab even, uh, please let me know. Uh, I love learning the application of what we do in theory. I love seeing the application in real life. Okay? So that's it for this video. As usual, click the link to get to the playlist. Uh, it should be around here somewhere, as well as my website. And uh, don't forget to share this with your friends, family, and your dog.